finance, uh, city council finance order uh, to be January 16th to 2018. So thank you all for being here as well. But, uh, before we um, before we begin, um, I would like to at this time take a moment of silence for uh, somebody that we uh, lost yesterday, very uh, dear friend uh, to the city, uh, Sergeant uh, from the Brockton Police Department. Uh, Father was a former city councilor, Ward 5, councilor at large, served the city well as the former mayor um, of the city for, for two terms, Mr. Uh, James Harrington, and uh, of course his, uh, his wife uh, Karen, no stranger at all uh, either to the city. Uh, the loss of uh, Tracy um, Barbas is um, a big loss to, to all of us here. So, you know, with that being said, um, I, I just want to take a couple of minutes to um, pay our respects to her. Uh, and ask you to her and, and, and to the family. And may she, uh, may she rest in peace. And as you all know, uh, um, guest here and counselors, uh, uh, the uh, calling hours are at the Muscle <coughs> Funeral Home on uh, uh, Thursday uh, evening, afternoon, evening from 3 to 8. PM and then it will be 11 o'clock uh, funeral mass at Our Lady Lords. I know that uh, some of us that uh, were here um, as counselors, and of course Council Rodriguez, who worked in the mayor's office, I'm, I'm sure will um, uh, uh, say would probably be attending. And those of you that uh, wish to naturally, uh, would, uh, I'm sure they would uh, love to have a, a full uh, accounting of the councils that will be in present. Uh, um, just briefly, just mentioned um, I met uh, the Harrington family many, many, many years ago. Um, back when I became school committee member, and Jimmy was just the uh, he was the hockey coach at the Asheville PAC. And that's what we that's what it was called, and that's how we started. And uh, and his uh, family was always involved in the school system. And Tracy was right there. She was always doing something. Um, great, great gal. And uh, you know, it's um, it's heartening when you have something uh, something like this. So. To them, we're thinking of them, no doubt. So appreciate it. A um, couple of things just before we begin, while it's on my mind, um, as Council uh, former President Sullivan used to say, housekeeping. But um, sometimes it's best to do it at the beginning while I'm, I'm fresh here. And I do want to mention a couple of things um, uh, to you. Now we're here this evening because the the little theater is being used by the people that should be using it, and that's the school committee. We will return there next week on the 22nd, Monday the 22nd at uh, 8 o'clock p.m. for our regular council meeting. Uh, and then we uh, will not have a meeting the following week because we have five Mondays um, this month, so we will not have a, um, a meeting, a finance meeting on the 29th, but we will reconvene again on uh, February uh, 5th, um, and hopefully all meetings next month will be uh, there at the, uh, at the Little Theater. But at some point, I mean, if any time councilors feel that they want to do something different from where we are, you know, cited to be at the Little Theater, then, you know, just let me know and we can try to see what we can do, what we can do different. Um, I know m m many times we've been invited to go to the, um, to the cable um, uh, place up there and, and, and <coughs> I shouldn't say the cable place, but to BCA and, um, you know, we could use the facilities there if we wanted to as, as well and you'd be, you'd be on live and here we're being taped, which brings me to um, the issue of cable. And, and I will indicate uh, to you that uh, today, uh, when I was in City Hall for a few moments and met with the, uh, met with the mayor, one of the things that uh, he and I discussed was the cable situation. And uh, um, Mayor Carpenter is on board with us 150% in regards to what we have to do, uh, not only here, but even at the Little Theater. And he's uh, feverishly working at it as well to get, get it accomplished as I'm gonna try and stay on top of it because we've been saying it for I don't know how long it needs to be taken care of. Um, so much that um, he even got Mark Lindy on the phone and uh, didn't take too long for Mark to rattle back to be truthful with you and uh, have conversation while I was in there indicating that, you know, they're trying to right now put together a time frame. The bids are in. The bids need to be reviewed by legal counsel and by our procurement. And then hopefully from that point we'll have a little bit more indication of when. And, but he knows the urgency. So I just want to let everybody know that we are working on it. And uh, uh, even as the mayor indicated to him, you know, a lot of... Um, you know, the, the items that of the whole, uh, probably the whole th workload would be, you know, able to be purchased through the uh, state bid list. That's what we have a state bid list for. So just want to let you know um, know that as well. And I also uh, also indicated to the mayor today, I asked him to speak with department heads when he meets with them tomorrow 
uh, because we have a little difficulty getting our mail. And I think, um, you know, it's been mentioned before, but I think it came through the clerk's office, so the mayor's gonna mention that the department has it, anything that department heads need to send to us, uh, especially urgency, if they could, um, you know, just send it right out to our home uh, home addresses, and I've furnished him with that, uh, with that information uh, uh, as well. So I just wanted to uh, touch base on those, um, those couple of items. Uh, with that being said, then I guess we're uh, ready for um, item number one. Madam Clerk. Order, the sum of 235000 appropriated to pay all costs of replacing the City Hall elevator, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow the said amount under a <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Hello, Councilors. Hello, Thank well. you. Thank I'll you for being here. Take questions. Questions, Council Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> question that I brought up last week. I want to know why we were putting out a bond as well as relative to this uh, appropriation amount, rather than just taking the stabilization. I'll let Jay answer that. Thank you. <coughs> Connie, good evening. So I thought about simply making an appropriation from the stabilization fund, but I'm concerned about the impact of next year's budget. And we've got another appropriation which will be coming to you in the next council meeting for the settling of the police supervisor's contract. We haven't seen what the impact of the snow is going to be this year. So I thought since we're going out to borrow for previously approved projects, the LED project, one of them in $300,000 added onto that, doesn't significantly add to it in it. Helps to preserve the stabilization. So you're going to bake this amount into that. It's not going to be a separate municipal bond, right? You're it'll be it. it'll be a part of the bigger bond. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Council no, no, that was my question. Thank okay. you. Any other council follow? No, just a comment to Mr. Casari and actually the mayor and Mr. Kleiner. Obviously, in government, people criticize you for not replacing the elevator sooner, and it probably could have been done years ago. But I would like to thank the three of you for really focusing in on this. I know it's going to take a long while to have the unit custom built for this building. I think a lot of people think that you can just pluck one off a shelf, put it in, and it will work. And uh, uh, it's a sizable amount of money, but it's a one-time expenditure. Hopefully thereafter, because it's a modern unit, we'll have a lot easier time with maintenance. Uh, and I would like to thank Mr. Casseri for his work on this. Uh, thank you. And appreciate and actually, it. the building department in general, I, I appreciate if I need information, you'll give it to me, however infrequent that is. And, um, and on a personal note, I, I don't think a lot of people realize the building commissioner has to be certified by the Board of Building Regulations and Standards. And it's a very heavy test to have to pass. So we're, we're actually already, five of them. Yeah, it's five of them. You have to pass all five. So we're we're lucky to have a Brockton resident who uh, who has that job. And uh, since the mayor's here, and this is my third year, I suspect your appointment's going to be coming up shortly. And I, you can certainly count on support from this council. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you for your efforts. Appreciate that. Thank you, council. Any other motion? Oh. Second. Um, on the motion. On the motion. Council. Uh, Mr. Casari, did you just give us an update of exactly where we stand in terms of? the uh, elevator being put back into action in the sense that we've heard there's going to be anywhere between you know six to seven to eight months uh, exa where exactly are we with the elevator we are in the final stages of the design of the elevator and it's a, it's a difficult design process because of the age of this building and the restraints I mean the elevator machine movement is up in the attic uh, it's a cable system and you have to engineer not only a, a new elevator cab, but we're going to have to widen all the doorways <coughs> by an inch and a half to make them all handicapped accessible. We have to put a new alarm system in for the elevator. The entire machine room has to be fire rated and fire coded now. Everything is going to be brought up to today's standard. So this elevator lasted for 35 years or so. So I suspect the new one will. 
But my point is it takes a long time. There's a lot of electrical design that goes into it. Uh, you have to design all the machine room, the, all the cable systems, the pulleys, the motors. And so there's a lot of design that's gone into it. We're at the final stage now. And the reason I wanted to come here early now, before the design is done, because once the design is finalized, we'll have money in place to go right out to bid. So I suspect within the next couple of weeks, we'll be ready to go out to bid. So when do you foresee the elevator okay. being operational? So the bid process, process will be like a three-week process. Uh, once there's a successful bidder in place, he'll have to order all the parts. I imagine there's a lead time of a couple months on getting an elevator cab made. It's going to have to be specifically made for this situation. There's nothing sitting on a shelf. And, um, but I imagine they'll be able to start the demo process while they're waiting for that to take place. I'm hoping that this elevator is up and running late summer. That's my, that's my goal. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, I just had a few questions. That's fine, as long as we stay on the motion. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm wondering, will the new elevator be the same size as the existing elevator? Yeah, it pretty much has to fit in that shaft, so I'm, I suspect it will be the same and size. And does that comply with the regs of the Architectural Access Board? Yes, it does. So you don't have to go for a variance? No, because we're able to widen the doorway since mm -hmm. we only have sufficient space inside. That's great. And will the new elevator well, it'll be owned by the successful bidder for one year. So after that year, we would get a service contract. Thank you, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any, anything else? Motion's been made and seconded to send back to the Blue City Council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the uh, Blue City Council. Okay. Thank month. you. I do want to just take a, a minute, two councils to, I want to thank the uh, Building Commission and staff um, for doing what they've done here this evening to set up for us. I asked that it be set up a little differently for us here this evening, and, and um, Mr. Casario is down here with me this afternoon, and uh, you know, so I appreciate what he did. Oh, well, Ms. Jonathan is going to elevate so, but I appreciate it. I thought I'd get treated a little better if I gave you the nice cushy <laughs> chairs to sit in. Yeah, and, and I came into comments, and this my chair, I think I stand, but... Uh, thank you. Right. Thank you. Item number two, Madam Clerk. Sure. 
that this was all included. Okay. Is that correct? Okay, because I don't know if people realize this, but you're the new traffic commissioner, and our next meeting that anyone in the public is open to attend is next Thursday, January 25th, and we've relocated to the Water Commission on Montauk. And uh, because we get so many calls about concerns with speeding and um, parking issues, I thought that maybe you could tell us a little bit about your plans or if you have any different ideas on how to address these concerns in, <coughs> in your new position. With the parking issues? Just parking issues, concerned. speeding issues, etc. Yes, because we have a lot of parents that call and say there's a lot, a lot of speeding taking place um, near where students are waiting to get the school buses or getting off the school buses or walking. And we also have parking issues where people want to leave their cars even though snowstorms. So they're two separate <coughs> issues, but I wanted to commend individuals that have been leaving tickets on illegally parked cars, as I'll refer to. Council, so Council I, would, I, would, I would just recommend to you that if, if you want to really ask what the uh, captain's going to do somewhat differently, Traffic Commission from previous commissions that I would file a resolve and have I did. You know, okay, so okay. so you said you really didn't. Uh, I mean, let's let's just stay focused on the executive on this one here that's before us. Okay. Any other questions, um, Council? Uh, Did we motion? Was there a motion made? Motion, motion to recommend, recommend favorably. Favorable. Favorable. Yeah. Yeah. Motion was made and seconded. Recommend favorably. Any other, any other side, Council? Okay. okay. On the motion, all in, all in favor. Opposed goes back to the full city council favor recommendation. Thank you. Good luck. <coughs> Number four. Order appropriation of twenty seven thousand from fiscal year eighteen mass to the department of public health. <clears throat> just on that, uh, Chief Williams contacted me uh, uh, this afternoon indicating that uh, he did have a previous commitment who wouldn't be here if necessary, and I indicated to him that he did not have to be, so I um, found that uh, you know, the Chief uh, comes to every time the police department really moves into the, into the fire department, so I knew you were going to be here, so you could, you could take it from there. So, Councils, that's why the fire chief is here. Chief, probably go ahead. Uh, just the uh, Naki agreement we've had the last few years, it's, like you said, between us and the fire. Um, so we have equal amounts. Every police officer carries an IKEA along with every firefighter. Um, it is used quite a bit. Favorable recommendation. Second. 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 On the motion. On the motion, Councilor Cruz. Thank you. Just a quick question. About how many doses does that purchase? Do you know? I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other motions been made and seconded and sent back to the full city council? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Goes back to the full recommendation. Thank you, Chief. And uh, councilors, on, on this one here, the superintendent of the schools, as you know, is attending the school committee meeting this evening, so she could not be here, but the mayor and the chief financial officer, uh, excuse me, um, the chief budget officer, Aldo Petroni, was here to answer the question. So, good evening, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Good evening. So, I'll just give you a <coughs> brief overview, and then both Aldo and Jay are here to answer specific questions around numbers. This is uh, non-net school spending that the city is responsible for each year to provide transportation expenses uh, to the school department. That includes not just buses, but all the special ed transportation and crossing guards. Uh, coming into the new school year in the fall and looking at the budget, uh, we knew it was
was going to come up a little bit short, but at that time we didn't have the final numbers from the state. Uh, we're hoping we'd see a little more state money than we did. Um, we did back in September, the council did send 100,000 additional over towards transportation expenses. And this number now represents the shortfall to get the school department through the balance of the school year without having to make any changes in terms of uh, pushing out the walk zone, taking buses off the road. We're mandated to provide the special ed transportation, so without this funding, we'd be looking at taking a number of the regular school buses off the road and pushing the walk zones out. And quite honestly, that's something we may have to look at prior to the next school year. But at the time back in August when we were looking at this, we were going to come close enough that that decision seemed a little premature at that point to be forcing out the walk zones without having more time to look to see where the numbers would actually come out. So this amount that's being requested is uh, to cover the balance of the school year to maintain the current level of transportation. Councilor Cruz. Thank you. Actually, a quick question for Jay, and I think you had sent this to us, but where are we in the stabilization fund? Uh, the balance just at the moment is just under six and a half million dollars. So this would reduce it by almost 400,000. And then as I indicated to Councilor Sullivan, there will be additional requests for spending from it, and the school supervisor's contract and another smaller item. But we'll be down to about $5 million as we come out of this close of the snow year and go into the budget. And then just one other question. Is this the item <coughs> that uh, some towns are able to count as net school spending a window? I don't know what. No, the difference is that if you're in a regional district, uh, the state provides assistance on the cherry sheet for your busing cost. If you're not in a regional district, you don't get the assistance. So to the extent that we have children going to the Southeast Regional, that's a regional district, there is assistance that goes to that school. But for us, and I don't get it because, you know, truthfully, your busing requirements in the city are just as great as they are to put kids into a bus and get them into a regional district. I understand that's a lot of geographic area to cover, but we need the help too, but it's been probably 15 or 20 years since we've received that assistance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other? Motion to recommend second. favor. Second. Motion to made the second to recommend favor to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Thank you, gentlemen. And the next item, Madam Clerk. Resolve that a sense of the city council be determined in the discussion for the possible change in the time of its regular meeting, 8 p.m. to 7 p.m. An ordinance, okay. an ordinance that specifies the time of the regular city council meeting so and the months when you will have only one meeting. Okay. Point of information? Yep. It's actually part of the charter. This would take, for us to, I've looked into this, yeah. for us to change this, it would take state legislative approval. Yes. Which I don't believe is any, would be any large issue, but no, I, don't think so. uh, I believe it's in the charter. I could be wrong, but I've looked at it before. Council well, Actually, to my colleague, that this is exactly why I wanted to get a sense of the council. Rather than expend a lot of time with legislative council to either amend the charter or amend the ordinances, if it's the will of this body to recommend favorably that we do something different, then I think it would be worthwhile putting forth the effort to change the time and or the number of meetings. Uh, I would just say, uh, and I'll let council president speak for himself, this is a working city. 
and to the extent that changing the time of our regular meeting from 8 to 7 would allow people who ordinarily get up very early and have to transport themselves into work and they're interested in what's going on, starting an hour early may mean the difference between having them watch a meeting or participate and not participate. And the other thing that I, uh, I probably never said when I was mayor, but I'll say now, the volume of work that I see all of the councilors do is such that I, I'm not sure having only one meeting for June, July, August, and September really allows us to get done what we need to get done. I mean, it, one meeting in June is going to be the budget anyway. And then I remember one year when, unfortunately, the, the administration didn't get some revolving accounts in in a timely fashion. Uh, and I've just seen the number of issues ramp up. And so I'm just wondering if we shouldn't have two scheduled meetings in June and two in September. They can always be canceled. But, but allow for that simply so that there's a flow of, of work that can be done. And, uh, and again, I always respect wherever any of you come from, but I, I didn't want to go forward with an ordinance, waste that amount of time if people want to leave it alone or they want to do something different. Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My, um, I just want to make a comment. I'm going to take a couple questions because it's not going to be that long. But my, my comment on it is pretty much time frame I think we should take a look at the seven o'clock time frame June in my opinion I think it should be left alone because we are busy in June we have to do the budget you're all five or four or five nights you've got a lot going on in, in the month of June and there's sometimes when we have to have a special meeting because of what we have to do to conclude you know for the fiscal year in itself September I never can understand why we were in summer session in September even on school committee in July and August you went back to you went back to school in September, and you went back to everything went back to normal. So uh, that's where I stand on it. But I, I think it's a, I think it's a, I think consensus. Why I think it's a, it is a good, uh, good idea. And uh, like the council said, you know, let's let's discuss. And if we think we need to go further, we can go further. So, Council Sullivan, I, I just want to first of all thank both you and Mr. Farwell. I, I think it's long overdue. Um, I think seven o'clock for a finance committee meeting is appropriate, and I think we should just match that seven o'clock for a full city council. Um, I, for one, can say when I get home from work at 5 or 6 o'clock, that gap of two hours or so, I mean, it could be much more productive being here at 7 o'clock to get it done. Right. Um, we also are going to get more people here, and we're also not going to lose as many, because when it gets to be 9 or 9.30 at night, you start to see people leave, rightfully so. Um, I think that the September summer session should be changed, absolutely. I, I concur with you. I think that June should stay as is, due to the fact that we do go into budget. Um, we do have special meetings. Uh, but the September one is important because we just noted this recently. A lot of legislative sessions ended and a lot of the uh, pending matters relative to ordinance changes were only on a third reading. Um, if we had a meeting in September, perhaps some of those would have been captured and they would have been uh, voted on for a final vote, either yay or nay. So I, I think we should do this. I don't know if it is a charter, a charter rule. I haven't checked that. Uh, but I think our legislative uh, council uh, attorney resident should look at that as well. Uh, and I think we should move forward on that. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council, Council yep, I agree completely with, with uh, Council Sullivan on this 7 p.m. and what he said. The whole, the whole thing, I think that's probably the way to go. Yep. Right. Council, I mean, just my comment is I think this came off of a conversation that Council Fowell and I had the day of the inauguration. I've never understood. The 8 o'clock is actually a remnant <coughs> of 100 years ago right, right. when uh, it was harder for people to get from work, especially if they worked out of town and back, if they served on the body be here for a seven o'clock meeting. The reasoning nowadays is not needed at all. The, again, I don't know that we need to go to two meetings all of those months. I, I agree, I think June, we're busy, June we're busy enough. But uh, the seven o'clock, there is nothing worse. Personally, uh, you get home and you sit down on that couch while you're trying to read your, and get ready for an eight o'clock meeting and it just seems like you, I'm old now, I don't want to go out at, at quarter of eight in a cold night. Um, I think it's, and again, I do believe, and I could be wrong because I had looked into this, that it would need legislative approval, but I don't think that would be any 
any major issue at all to get that done. So I think the alderman might have walked back in those days too. Uh, well, exactly. Uh, truthfully, it was some of it was because it was kind of for the outlying <coughs> wards to get here. Right. Alderman Sullivan's door, and you all went up down the street. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, it wasn't either. Though. But in any case. Uh, Anything else, Councilor Powell? Council? No, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do believe that gap between, you know, five and, and, and eight, it's, it's pretty huge, given the fact that, I mean, some of us got, got a fourth, like, at five o'clock. I mean, I think yeah. moving the meeting at seven is excellent. I believe we, we will be able to get more people to, um, to attend the meeting and, of course, you know, see and find out what's going on. Of course, I think one of us just said we could be more, more productive in terms of what we can do as a, um, as, you know, as a, as a whole. I think so too. Council I, no, I just wanted to tag along with that because I think when once you once you set the seven o'clock, it's easier to say seven o'clock council meeting, oh, meeting. Yes. and it doesn't really matter if it's finance or regular city council meeting. At least you just keep it at seven o'clock, and then you know, you know, because some of us sometimes who are running a little longer than two, you know, we can't quite figure out if it's finance or it's city council meeting. I think if you just set it at the seven o'clock uh, level, I think. Yeah, it's going to stop Council Cools from calling me all the time and asking me what time the meeting is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Council Powell, any, anything else you well, want to Well, just room? from what I'm hearing by way of summary, if this gets a favorable, what I'll do is ask the clerk to consult with our legislative council and go to two meetings in September, leave June alone, and change the regular council meetings till 7. Right. So just for the record, if that comports with what everyone is uh, saying sounds good. In, in, in September. Do you want to make that? Do you want to make a motion, to Council? Uh, yeah, so move. favorable with that. Uh, with second. That second. Motion was made and seconded with a favorable recommendation back to the uh, full City Council. All in favor? All opposed with back to the full City Council. Favorable recommendation. We just done uh, on that. I just want to make a point um, because I think it was, it was good to have a resolve file like that. I thank you, Council, for doing it this way. Gave us some time to uh, chat ourselves in regards to something you know, to sit and chat with, and I think it shows that we need some work. Well, uh, within the next 30 days, uh, I'm going to be filing um, a resolve that we can have a quick chat too, because I think it's time we, as a city council, start to have a little discussion on what we think we should be doing with the stadium, with with Campanelli Stadium, um, with the function facility. Uh, as we all know, you know, things have changed at the Shaw Center of the stadium. The venue's changed. Um, you go by, the, the place is, uh, it's beginning to look desolate and empty. And I think that we need to, as just as a council, I'd like to just as a council have a discussion to where we can make our recommendation back to what we think has to be done to the city and let them, let them know. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to file that same type of resolve. And then after that, I'm going to actually get, uh, set up an unofficial committee that's going to take a look at it make some type of a decision, come back and we talk about it so that by budget time we can say, this is what our thoughts are on what are we going to do with the future of the stadium. And as I've always said it since I've been here, it's our asset, we need to protect it, and uh, we, need, we need to do something. And, and I think something can be done uh, for the best interest of the city. I really do, I really do. So I just want to let you know that. So that'll be happening probably in the next, uh, probably in the next meeting or two, so just so everyone knows that. Um, somebody, uh, Council Board guy, you all said? Uh, Yes, you may. Does she need it? Okay. And those of you don't realize, we have um, vending machines, and they're making a lot of noise. And this is why I'm leaning over so I can s hear the council president and what he is saying. So that's uh, and not, not to be rude. I want to hear everything that's being said. Now, I do have a couple moments of personal privilege. First of all, um, I wanted uh, to commend the fact that we are beginning to address the people that are parking, that are not supposed to be during the winter parking ban and the snow emergency. I, I sincerely hope we'll continue to see that. Um, I have filed a resolve to have the new traffic commissioner director come in front of us to explain all, all of this. And I always mention to people that none of this is top secret. You can attend any of these meetings and they're posted on the city's website and you can always call the offices if you have any kind of concerns and find out when they are. Second, I wanted to let you know that I'm having my ward meeting tomorrow night unless the weather dictates differently. So it's still supposed to be at 6.30 East Middle School. 
464 Center Street, beginning at 630. And fortunately, uh, Superintendent Kathy Smith will be down the hall. She's in the cafeteria. I'm in the auditorium. And for those of you who are seriously concerned, and justifiably so, with what's transpiring in the school system, you may attend both meetings or go back and forth. And uh, at this point, also, you'll be able to speak to some of the state representatives will be available. And also, uh, I wanted to mention that the Ganley Building, uh, when I met with um, an individual uh, from the governor's office, has let me know that the demolition is supposed to take place in the middle of June of this year. So uh, we'll keep you continuously posted on that. But that is, I just want to make that clear. The primary information, by the way, tomorrow evening will be the discussion of the intersection of Plymouth and Center Street. And we're looking forward to individuals' input. Should you have any further questions, 774-297-4939. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Lally? All right, let me grab the, uh, All right, cool. Is this good? Does this work from here? Or do you want me to? All right. Uh, I just wanted to let everyone know two things. Uh, Monday the 22nd will be the opening of the uh, McKinley Park up at Hovenden and Winter. Uh, it's been postponed from tomorrow at noon because of the weather. Uh, so it will be Monday the 22nd at 10.20 a.m. Also, the Mass DOT is hosting a meeting on January 30th at the Ashfield Middle School at 6.30 p.m. about the intersection of North Quincy Street and Chestnut Street in Abington. Uh, again, their proposal is to install a roundabout there in order to try and try and uh, address all the accidents that happen, especially the fatal accidents that are happening at that intersection. Um, so they, they're looking to show you what they have with their plan currently and then get input from the public. So if you are able to, the Ashfield Middle School, 225 Co Road, uh, 6.30 p.m. Uh, on January 30th. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Any other, uh, Council Rodriguez? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Chairman and colleagues in government, uh, as you know, um, last year at the end of the uh, calendar year, the uh, high school men's soccer club uh, won the state championship, uh, a moment that 99.999% of us here in Brockton were very proud of, uh, regardless whether you follow the sport or not. Um, and they brought a championship to the city that we haven't had in quite some time. So the community is getting together and putting together a gala celebration to honor these young people here in our community. And it's going to take place on February 3rd at the uh, conference center here in the city. Uh, tickets are available. Folks that are watching us at home can get in touch with um, myself, the uh, Cape Verdean Association, uh, Soraya at the school department uh, to obtain ticket for the dinner. But in addition to that, I'm actually looking, I know we're not supposed to be doing any solicitation, but I'm actually going to solicit uh, the members of our city council and folks that are watching us at home, uh, those that are willing to donate some funds to help us purchase some rings for these young people. Uh, I think it's a, it's a wonderful gesture as these kids move on to college to have something that they can, rem, uh, they can remind them of our great city and their accomplishments. So I urge you all to uh, dip into your campaign accounts, uh, do some things that we need to do, uh, Council Cruz, uh, and help us uh, to be able to uh, purchase uh, these ranks for these young people. A lot of us played soccer while we were in high school, but we were never had the opportunity to do uh, what these kids did. So it's with a great deal of honor and pride that I come here and ask you to help us out and make sure that we do uh, the right thing for these young people. Thank you. Thank you, Council. I'm sure that we will, uh, we will do something, I'm sure. Council, is any... Uh
Anything else? Councilor Sullivan. Um, are you giving some thoughts um, to have the budget outside of the Little Theater? I think the Little Theater would be the right venue. I, I, I think so, yes, I am. I, okay. am, giving the, I am giving that thought. And, uh, like I said earlier, we'll, we'll, meet, we'll meet at the Little Theater through the month of February, and if anyone wants to, you know, think of something different, you know, we've even, with the City Clerk and I, have even thought about the War Memorial Building a couple of times as well, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, when it gets, when it does get down to the budget crunch time, it's, it's going to have to be in a different type of a setting. So I'll have to come up with, we will come up with something. You know, and in light of that, just mention that I, I did ask him today, just briefly, you know, what would happen if, you know, when the RFP was granted, you know, could could they be working around the clock type of thing, and and you know, rightfully so, with the answer he gave me is is the company gave him back says, would you really get what you want out of the second shift to do because they're going to take two or three hours to learn what the first shift hadn't done to do what they're going to do while they're here during the night, it could even take longer. You know, I thought maybe it'd be something that would work even faster, but. It wouldn't. So it's it's going to be no doubt. No doubt. He said it's going to be till at least July. Anyways, July into August. So we'll make do. Um, I think tonight was a was a decent setup. You know as well. So um, I, I just want to make mention to um, uh, Connie, who's done a lot of work for us uh, um, here. You know, in the finance committee. She's um, she's not leaving us. She's staying with us. But she got a little promotion, I believe, in the auditor's office. So um, congratulations to her. And, uh, <laughs> She still will be present here in City Hall, but I just want to, I want to thank her. I know she worked with uh, you and Councilor Cruz over the last, uh, last couple of years, so I appreciate that. Any other uh, any other business councils? Then next Monday night at uh, 8 p.m. at uh, the Rob Little Theater, that's where we'll come in again. See you in all the business. We adjourn. Amen.